what's up calc gang or should i say physics gang um, no but we're calc gang we're doing calculus here uh, but if you don't want to do calculus i'm going to put this stuff here too the uh, kinetics equations uh it's the same thing you're gonna get the same numbers okay let's okay that was a, ro a rocky start to the first video all right maybe i should start over no nah, we don't start over here okay here we go we have a problem uh, as you saw in the thumbnail so we have a train and it accelerates at 1.6 meters a second squared for 14 seconds. Then after 14 seconds, it goes for the same speed for 70 seconds, and then it slows down, it, an ex or it decelerates, you know, at a rate of 3.5 meters a second squared until it stops. And we wanna know how far did the train travel? Let's do it. I like to draw a picture. I'm gonna draw it up here though. Okay, so we have our train, look at that thing. It's a box. All right, so for, this is 14 seconds, right? It's accelerating at 1.6 meters second squared. And then it goes again for another 70 seconds. So this is like 14 plus 70 seconds. Uh, I'm just gonna say 70. And then it goes, uh, no acceleration. I guess this is acceleration. And then it goes again until it stops question mark seconds. We don't know how many that is yet. We're gonna need to find that. Am I in the glare? Yeah, I'm in the glare. I hate the glare. That's okay. And then it decelerates at negative 3.5 meters a second squared. And we need to know its total distance. How are we gonna solve this? Well, we're gonna break it into parts, first of all. So let's do the first part. Let's see how far does it travel in this first 14 seconds when it's accelerating. All right, so let's write down what we know, right? So for this section here, acceleration is equal to 1.6, right? All right, so now we're gonna use a kinetic, or, or one of our kinetic, or kinematic equation, right? So it says velocity is equal to, it's just acceleration multiplied by the time, and then plus our initial velocity, which our initial velocity is zero because we're starting at not moving at all. So that means that uh, velocity is going to be equal to 1.6 time. All right, makes sense to me, right? Now, we need to know, we're trying to find its distance, right? We don't care about the velocity. Actually, we do care about the velocity, but we'll get back to that in a second. So its distance is one half acceleration times squared plus uh, velocity time plus the initial starting point, which is zero. And we also know that, um, I'm just taking the integral here. Like if, you're, if you guys know what's going on in calculus, maybe you guys don't. This is a calculus-based uh, physics class that I'm in. And um, most people in here don't actually like, they haven't learned integrals yet. Uh, for me, I have, because I'm a little ahead in math. But uh, basically, you're taking the integral, and I like to think of it that way. Um, but if you don't like to think of it that way, you can use these equations. So that means that x is equal to, uh, this is divided by 2, so 0 0.8 t squared, plus our initial velocity, or plus our velocity, but we don't have a velocity, right? We are starting at 0. And plus our initial starting point, which is also 0. So this is it. And then if you want to see how far we went in that time, which is 14 seconds, you just plug in 14 for t. So x of uh, 14, this is saying that t is equal to 14, is equal to 0 0.814 squared, right? And this is equal to, what do I got here? Uh, 156.8 meters. This is how far we go in this much time. 156.8 meters. All right, so anyway, we have a third of the problem solved, right? So now we need to do this part, where acceleration is equal to zero. So that means that we need to know what our velocity is during this period in order to find our time. Thankfully, we know that we're not accelerating here, so our velocity is gonna be constant. And we know that we have this velocity equation, right? We can find out what our velocity is at 14 seconds right here for our next part, since it's gonna stay the same. So let's do that. So let's say that our velocity of uh, 14, this is saying that what is our velocity at time is equal to 14. When we plug in 14 for t, we're gonna get some value for velocity. It's equal to 1.6 times 14, which is equal to, um, where is this? Where did I write this? I should have wrote this somewhere. Oh, here it is, 22.4 meters a second. All right, so that's saying that we're going 22.4 meters a second during this period. So that's pretty simple. Let's, let's start on our second part now. We have all the important information we need into this part. All right, we're on our middle part now. All right, so we have velocity 
is equal to, there is no acceleration, plus our initial velocity, which we know is 22.4, right? Perfect. Now we need to know what our distance is. So if we use our equation, we have no acceleration, so we can ignore that. And then we add a t to our velocity, so 22.4 uh, t. And then it's asking what is our initial starting point, like how far has we gone? So we know that we're at 156.8 meters as soon as we get to 14 seconds, which is during this period. So we can just go ahead and tack that on, 156.8 meters. Uh, don't put the meters there, it's confusing. Okay, and then we wanna know, how far will we be after the uh, 70 seconds of this being done? So you want to, you might be, uh, you might be uh, motivated to write something like 84 seconds, right? But the issue with that is that it's considering like as if this was also in the same equation, which it's not. We already accounted for this part, so we have to break it up part by part, and we realize that this is only 70 seconds. So you cannot put 84, put 70 for t. So x of 70, remember this is saying that our t is 70, it's equal to, so it's going to be 22.4 times 70, uh, where did I write this down, this is 1568 for this number, plus 156.8, which is going to be equal to 1,724.8 meters. Alright, perfect, so that's how far we've gone in this entire section. Let's go ahead and write that down uh, here. This entire thing is 1724.8 meters. All right, now we're gonna find out this part. Once again, we're gonna need to use acceleration and stuff. Uh, what's our velocity? Yes. Okay, so our acceleration. Let's start with our acceleration. I like to work my way down, you know? Um, you actually don't have to. I guess you can just play straight into this equation, can't you? You can't do that, actually. I've been doing this hard the whole time. I like to do calculus, but I'm a little bit of a nerd. So x is equal to 1 half acceleration, negative 3.5 t squared, plus velocity, which is still 22.4, because that's, you know, that's the speed we're going the whole time. And then plus our initial uh, distance, which is 1,724.8 meters. OK. Um, what do we do here? Well, it's kind of confusing, but what we need to know is when our velocity is equal to zero. Like, how do we find a stop, right? And we define a stop as when our velocity is equal to zero. And we need to know what t value equates to our velocity being equal to zero, right? So let's find out. Let's write our velocity equation. We'll come back to this equation later. So our velocity is equal to acceleration negative 3.5 t plus our initial velocity. And then if we're trying to find what time our velocity equals to zero, simply put your velocity equal to zero. So V is equal to zero, and then, you know, so V zero is equal to negative 3.5 T plus 22.4. Then you can uh, add the 3.5 T to the other side, and then simply divide by 3.5 to get T is equal to uh, 6.4. Okay, so t is equal to 6.4. So once it hits this section here, after 84 seconds, it takes 6.4 seconds for it to come to a complete stop. So what that means is we can plug in 6.4 into this equation for t to get how much distance it covers during this deceleration period until it comes to a stop. So let's do that. x of 6.4. Once again, this is just saying you're plugging in 6.4 for all these t values here. And that is going to give you Let's see, equal to 1,796.48 meters. And it's asking for in kilometers. So this is pretty much equal to, you know, 1.79. But I think if you're rounding to sig figs on this, it wants 1.80 kilometers. And there you go. That's how you do these kind of problems. You want to break it up into little parts. Make it manageable, do it little part by little part, and you cannot forget these equations unless you know calculus. If you do know calculus, you can forget the equations, but they're actually still really handy. And uh, yeah, so I hope you, uh, hope you guys learned a little something and stick around for some more physics videos. If you have this exact same problem on your uh, homework or whatever, you should probably subscribe because I'm going to be making videos out of my homework. And if I had this on my homework and you had this on your homework, we're probably gonna have a lot more problems in common that you can come to my channel 
I watched me explain. Uh, because, you know, I'm just so perfect at explaining math videos, and I'm just perfect in every way. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.